we weren't going to win tenders at okay. <laughs> so <laughs> phase two from not winning the tender yeah. is to look what materials these people oh, who are winning these I tenders see. what okay. what okay. inputs do they require okay. and hopefully you'll have him on the podcast soon and yeah he says to everything kenya has been broken down to billion and land cruiser those are the two uh, <laughs> so our expectations yeah. are now all the same yeah Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Financially Incorrect, a podcast sponsored by FX Spesa. Here we have a cheeky take. We take we have a cheeky take on serious financial topics. We've had interesting guests talked about different industries, understood different pay scales from, you know, medicine to um, cybersecurity to um, we had Dana said last week was talking about um, the music space and his journey and the podcasting world as well. And today we have um, Stephen Kimingi who is a passionate Pan-African who's an investor, an out-of-work farmer, and um, he is to- he's here to tell us about, um, I guess, all whether he applies his investing knowledge to his personal life and whether that's helped him um, generate lots and lots of money. And hopefully we can learn a thing or two. Yeah? So welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah? Thanks for having me on. Um, let's start this conversation with um, your perception of money. Um, before we actually started this um, discussion, you were, you were very passionately um, describing the difference between a million and a billion and the need for people to be able to understand exactly what that means. Yeah. And yeah, so maybe first of all, you can just give us your definition, first of all, and why you think that's really important for people to be able to understand and why you think they're frivolous um, <laughs> throwing around of the word billion is, you know, is, is loose, is too loose rather. I think. Yeah. Frivolous is right. I mean, maybe a trivialization of, um, of you know, one, the, the quantity that it is. Yeah. And I think that what you made reference to is there's a couple of uh, internet influencers who've been out to try explain the difference. And yeah. I think just ballpark figures, a million seconds is 11 days, a billion seconds is 31, almost 32 years. Yeah. So when you understand like those parameters, it allows you to stop like trivializing the pursuit. You know, it, yeah. I think it quantifies the effort required to achieve whatever you need to achieve. You know, same. So with anything like whether it's financial or otherwise, personal life or otherwise, like you need to have metrics that you understand or yeah. that you fathom. Yeah. Which is why I mean, for my opinion, is the trivialization is really something. So based so based on your definition, you're saying that to make it would take you eleven days if you're earning a shilling a second right. to earn a million shillings right. and it would take you 31 almost 32 years if you're earning a shilling a second to earn a billion shillings long story short yeah yeah okay um the second thing i want to ask you before we actually get into into our conversation and your money journey again is based on the conversation you're having before this no problem. around um the u.s dollar yeah. um and why <clears throat> you have issues with kenyans trading um, and using the U.S. dollar as a, a value proposition as opposed to industries. I think you gave a, 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 an, an example of a hotel in South Africa that charged charges a couple hundred rand. And right now, of course, based on the value proposition of the dollar, the rand has dropped, but it's still the same same value. Yeah. Correct. I mean, we're in a local market. We have our own uh, currency. And I think if we're going to like preserve our dignity, yeah. even as people in terms of affordability, you can't adjust everything unilaterally. There are things that direct imports, things like fuel, of course, are subjected to the dollar, but it's punitive Mm -hmm. uh, to start charging local people dollars when your factors of production, your loans, your inputs, it's almost selfish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to feel as though you're the only one to pay dollars. Mm -hmm. For example, you and I are doing a transaction. Yeah. And we started off on a basis of 1,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And at one point, 1,000 shillings became $10. I changed it to $10. That's fine, except for you're now paying 1,400 shillings. Mm-hmm. How do you communicate that gap to your income? Is it, mm-hmm. Has it transitioned? Mm-hmm. Yet, the service I'm providing you is entirely domestic-based. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the things that need to be considered. But what be what would be the solution then? Like, what's the way around it? How, how is that fixed? Again, you know, we have consumer protection, apparently. Yeah. You know, these are the things that should be reviewed. Yeah. Even just, like, rent should not be charged in, in, in dollars, you know? Mm-hmm. I find it um, somewhat unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, houses, you know, should not be sold in dollars. Mm-hmm. Where they're built, cement is bought in Kenya shillings, the mm-hmm. land is bought in Kenya shillings. And as soon as we start doing that, we're doing a disservice to ourselves, mm-hmm. you know. And that's why you find Kenya has disproportionate mm-hmm. uh, inflation figures mm-hmm. coming up. 
because you can't be losing on both fronts. Mm-hmm. You know, which is essentially that's what it is. You're losing twice. Mm-hmm. You're losing against inflation and you're losing against this amorphous entity that doesn't really directly impact us. And proportionately, what is the impact of a change in the dollar price mm-hmm. vis-a-vis what translates to the market? Mm-hmm. It's not a direct cost every single time. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just my personal opinion. But what about for the people then who are importing um, things from other countries against you know? Of course, in US, definitely. Like I said, there's direct importers can be uh, attri- they have their own challenges with the dollar, and it yeah. becomes challenging based on that. And so they pass that on to the exactly, consumer. but also pass it on proportionately. Okay, you understand. Your input cost of raw material is not your sole primary cost. Okay, they're factors. Their costs of production. You know, so of course, if the dollar goes up, it affects the cost of fuel, it affects your raw material. I was having this conversation with a friend uh, earlier in the week, looking yeah. at, you know, how manufacturers, but at the same time, electricity has gone up, taxes have gone up, mm-hmm. etc. So it's a compounded effect, yes, mm-hmm. but there should be some sensitivity towards the way it's increased. Mm-hmm. It can't be a unilateral adjustment mm-hmm. based on every individual factor. Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't, it can't work. Okay. Well, I am stoked to have this conversation because it sounds like you have a good grasp on 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 money and money and monetary value and, and, and exactly what that means. So let's begin by talking about where your money journey began. You know, um, okay. I guess as a as a child when you're growing up, um, I guess what 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 money was for you then, and when you realized um, the value and the power of money. Okay. I mean, yeah. um, value and power of money, I guess, is is always evident. Um, yeah. Regardless of how, how you relate to the money is, is what changes over time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, after, after high school, I took a gap year and a couple of friends of mine. Um, where, 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 where were you for high school? I was in the UK for high school. Oh, you were um, in the UK for high school? Yes, okay. So, so. You, wait, so let's, now that you've said that, let's backtrack. Were you born and raised here? I was born and raised in Kenya. Okay, what well, yeah. hospital? <laughs> and I, I, I was oh, born. <laughs> I was born. I was born in um, Aga Khan Hospital. Okay. Yeah. Right, so I was born in Nairobi Hospital. Nairobi Hospital. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, born and raised in Kenya. So um, at what age do you um, go out to 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 the UK to, to study at sixteen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What informed that decision? Um, well, I'd been in boarding school prior, so I wanted to continue. Um, boarding school prior? Yeah. So at what age did you go to boarding school? If you... At 12, 13. Which is 12, 13. Yeah, yeah. Where were you for boarding school? Uh, here in Kenya. Here in Kenya. In the <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. In, in the Rift Valley. In the Rift Valley. Yes. Okay. Yes. I assume that's like, a, um, my, my, my guess, my estimated guess would be that's either a... RVA uh-huh. or Turi or Green States, possibly. Yeah. 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 Um, you've, you've gotten it. I've got it. I've got it somewhere there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh huh. Yeah. No, so I went to Turi for my IGCSEs, and at the time they finished at 16. Okay. Um, so there was no choice to continue at Turi. So oh, we looked at the boarding either. options. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, South Africa, uh, the UK, and so on. So, yeah, I applied for an academic scholarship. And when I got it, my dad was happy with the results. Yeah. So, yeah, he was happy, happy to do that. To do, yeah. yeah. I was very, very grateful. It was a um, life-changing experience, actually. Yeah. Even in terms of exposure, I made some of my very good friends um, in the UK. Still keep in touch, very mm. close, still push um, each other, whether it's business. Did you have any, do you have any siblings? Yes, yes, I do. So, did any of them also come along, or those? So, there's here? a two-year age gap between my sister and I. Okay. And she was here, so she went. So she finished high school, and then she went, did her A levels in Nairobi, and then went okay. abroad for uni. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, so that was around the time when um, I moved. I got back from my A levels. I took a gap year, and you know, we started doing some uh, work with some friends of mine. You know, uh-huh. Obviously, you can't sit at home idle and etc. So we started looking at things we could do, and um, one of my very f- close friends, Ted, um, at the time, had um, suggested we look at bitumen. Uh, at what? Bitumen. Bitumen. For roads. Right. So um, he, had a, he had a contact who had very uh, competitively priced bitumen. At 18? At 18. My assumption is at 18 years of age. 18. Okay. 18. <laughs> We weren't going to win tenders at okay. 18. <laughs> so phase two from not winning the tender yeah. is to look what materials these people oh, who are winning these I tenders, see. what okay. what okay. inputs do they require? Okay, okay. And as it so happened, they had gone to, he had gone to school, um, actually the same school in the UK, and then he moved to South Africa for his A-levels. And um, 
so he had a friend from South Africa who was, they were doing bitumen. He's like, this thing can actually make us some good cash. And, you yeah. know, so we went, we got the specs, we became very familiar, drove around Nairobi, see who sells it. You know, you go down uh, industrial area, opposite city stadium, there are mm -hmm. people who have drums piled up. Mm -hmm. So the drums have been used. Yeah. So you then now need to find out, okay, who are the importers of this bitumen? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. like we really just went all out, like yeah. in our grind. Yeah. Granted, it wasn't for survival. It right. was, you know, like, let, let's not pretend we're stuff. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, we weren't working for survival, but we were looking at you, you, I mean, you're, you're keeping your time occupied, yeah. Yeah, and definitely the opportunity to make some cash. Yeah. So we did that, and, you know, at one point, we sat across a board meeting, a boardroom um, with somebody, and he asked why we wanted to make so much money when we were so young. Uh -huh. And, you know, at that point, ageism, like, kicked in, you know, yeah. You can't, we had fantastic price, product, samples. So you, everything. you had everything, you everything like, in terms of being able ready. to supply it. To everything. Okay. Even, you know, we'd gotten to the point where we are the, we're the trader. Our commission was secured by the supplier. Mm -hmm. So you didn't even need to rely that we're the ones who are going to supply you. Mm -hmm. This is the profile of the supplier. Here mm -hmm. it is. These are their credentials. Get on a call with them. Email them. Let them send you their stuff. Mm -hmm. Verify mm -hmm. their website. All of these things, mm -hmm. you know, proof of past transactions mm -hmm. and all of that. It's, it's on the table for you. Mm -hmm. And then they were just the age. They were just like, you're too young, young, young to do this. How much money, let's talk about um, how much money was there to be made potentially? Like, um, break down to me the. the it just even yeah. depended on volumes. You know, commodities are all high volume, low margin. Mm -hmm. You know, so whether you go from one container, from, it can be anything from 5,000 shillings, 10,000 shillings, mm -hmm. um, to substantially more. Mm -hmm. But you know, obviously, you can't climb a tree from the top. Yeah. So. You start with getting the one drum, two drums, ETC, which is why I said we even went as far as going to industrial area to find who the importers were. Fine, yeah. you don't want to trust us with the big volumes. Yeah. This is the market. We know the grades and, you know, just a lot of what I would term um, actually just hustling on them. Yeah. You know, trying to, to get from A to B. And because we don't need, there was no real capital required to broker. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't even a, a factor that we had to right, think that about. you had you to know, have money everybody to be able was to make importing it yeah. everybody so you'll still open your lc you'll still yeah. so it was really more about the gift of gab yeah and can you sell these people on this product yeah. and your supplier's capacity to deliver yeah so that's the problem but anyway um, one so is, did, did you have any did you actually um, one transact is, did you have after, any after we were told that we are too young to make that kind of money we were like you know what <laughs> it's just yeah. let's let's look at other things to yeah. do in, in yeah. this life we're going to uni in a couple of months apply for your visas and just sort that out so is that where the <laughs> yeah yeah that <laughs> one that one we left it there like, but it, it was it was a point where you became aware yeah. of not only is it a competitive environment there's yeah. now the age issue and, yeah. you know several in life You've been told you have to pay your dues, you know, wh when I was your age. Yeah. You know, all these narratives that yeah. one thing. And, you know, millennials are now not young anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, yeah. we're into our mid-30s, early yeah. 40s and all of that. So at which point do the dues stop being paid? Yeah. You know, and that 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 was a point of, 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 re of realization. Point. Yeah. Let me ask, um, um, before that, if I'm to take you back a bit um, in, in your life journey, so to speak, when you're in high school, yeah. when you're um, uh, applying to, to go to the UK, are you aware of the privilege that, yes, very that, much so. that, that, very that, much that, you, that you had? What, what yes. is it that made you aware? And at what age were you aware of, okay, yeah, I am living a sort of different life from, from the yeah, average person? I just, I mean, parents were very grounded. Yeah. Very, very grounded. You know, there's, um, there's a way you're raised to appreciate what you're given, you know, like it's, it's really, honestly, it just comes from your parents. Even yeah. if you have, and this is one thing I learned, um, I learned in the UK, and that was further compounded, you mm -hmm. know, um, by, by a very close friend of mine. And you realize that it's not, it's how, it's your core values have nothing to do with privilege. You know? mm -hmm. If you find yourself treating people badly, talking to people badly, talking down at people, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a behavioral mm -hmm. issue. It's not a privilege mm -hmm. issue. And, you know, and one thing I have resentment for is, People who act how they imagine rich people behave, mm -hmm. wastefully, frivolously, mm -hmm. etc. And most of the time, it's simply not the case. Mm -hmm. You don't get rich by wasting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. those are the things to be aware of. It's 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 an upbringing matter. So yeah. I, I have my parents to credit for that. I was extremely aware. Yeah. Um, even when we're looking, like I checked the school fees yeah. for the schools I wanted to apply yeah. for. I did the conversion. Yeah. And I said, okay, if I get the scholarship, 
this percentage of scholarship is viable to present to my father vis-a-vis -vis yeah. what is being paid now. Yeah. You know, and um, just a note, even on, on the school we went to, it was a very different school from what it is now. Yeah. It was very, very different. It was the one in the UK or? No, here. Yeah. St. Oh. Andrew's True was an yeah. extremely different school. You know, I'll tell you what, the there. first time I heard about um, um, St. Andrew's True, I, I guess I... I know of St. Andrew's Tree because I've, I've I've played their their they have an under is it under fifteen rugby mm -hmm. tournament under sixteen yes. under sixteen yeah so I've I've played in that tournament but the first time I had of St. Andrew's Tree I think I was being told about how kids were being taken to school with um with choppers absolute rubbish and <laughs> absolute absolute rubbish let me let me let me quell that rumor now that photo is from a political campaign rally yeah. in Nandi yeah. And it has nothing to do with Turi. So in your and in your time there, you never absolute, saw anyone yeah, brought yeah, yeah. in there was, by a chopper. There was nothing like that. So it was a very different school at the time. Yeah. You know, we were we did yeah. yeah we ran cross country every Friday. Yeah. Um, in fact, that's one of the things that they really spurred um, competition. Yeah. So as as an under fourteen boy, you expected to run it in under thirty two minutes. And how, how long is the cross country? Five kilometers. Okay. And they published your times in mm -hmm. chronological order on the notice board. Mm -hmm. Which save you at the bottom. And what happened if you didn't make the thirty-two minutes? Yeah, you start running until you can. Well, they were quite they were quite strict about yeah. it. They started slacking on it. Yeah. Um, I don't think now even cross country is mandatory. You know, it's a competitive sporting school. Yeah. And you know, not not to um, defame the institution, but you know, certain things have been loosened. Um, vis -a -vis there's compromises that have been made. Yeah. That have resulted in the perhaps the perception of the school yeah. now and the quality of student that comes in and out um but is, but but your standpoint is the choppers thing is not it's a lie it's not it's real. an absolute lie yeah. yeah 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 maybe i think at one point speech day the kcb ceo was the guest of honor mm -hmm. and he choppered in choppered out for the speech day but that was it you know but it was not a regular thing like no, for the no. like students are not being absolutely brought in and out not. by, absolutely by not. choppers yeah. okay yeah. and um and I know, I know we can check this now because I'd be really curious to find out um, what um, what tuition fees are now. Because I know IG schools increase it's something their, ridiculous. Increase their, their, their fees on a it's on, on, something on a ridiculous. Basis, you know, yeah. even vis-a-vis -vis wage increases, vis-a-vis -vis life. I mean, whatever it is, is yeah. really it's, it's, it's prohibitive. Like, I've, I mean, you can't justify the percentage of. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, and there's competition. You can go to South Africa. You can go to uh, Malawi, Kamuzo, mm -hmm. a friend who went there, um, mm -hmm. visioned after Eton, mm -hmm. you know, um, Waterford. At the same, at the same, at the same cost of Waterford. Probably less. Probably less, mm -hmm. you know. And it's not by force yeah. that you be here yeah. <laughs> in Nairobi. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really at this point, let's open our eyes to, yeah. to what are the other possibilities in yeah. a competitive world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So year, year 12 and year 13 day school is 645 per term year 12 and 13 weekly boarding is 943 oh, wow. per term year 12 and 13 full boarding is essentially a million it's, it's 993,000 per term so you're paying um essentially well, three million a, a, a year if maybe, you're doing 12 and 13. maybe we should look more seriously into tenders yeah <laughs> <laughs> this point, do you remember what, do you remember what cost what your costs were when you were there 180. 180 per term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is two. This is 2000 and 2000. This is 2000. 2003. 2003. So that is two, about 20, 20 years ago, 23 yeah. years ago. So the, so the fees have gone up by quadrupled, actually yeah. quintupled five times. Yeah. Uh, shocking. That is. Uh, it's not commensurate yeah, to inflation. Yeah. It's, no, it's kind of, not. Yeah. Would you take your your child to? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> based on the based on the free structure. Based on the free structure, what's the value proposition? Yeah, know? of spending um, a million, um, three million, a million a term, and yeah. you know, like even when you, I, I, I've been back there as an old boy one or two times, and you find that it's more a status symbol for the parents mm -hmm. um, than it is actual. What's the value, value? for yeah, the? Like, for I mean, the, for the, I don't know. I'm not a student there, so mm -hmm. I can't say a thing. But personally. I think they're they're viable competing options, okay. and you know that's that's really. I don't know saying this from a point of oh, it's never going to be affordable. Absolutely yeah. not. But yeah. it's also the ethics, the school, the correct. I mean, if you went there and it's a competitive sporting school yeah. and it's no longer that, yeah, it's no longer 
it's no longer, you know, yeah. like these are yeah. the things. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency. You can't have had schools abroad for 200 years yeah. producing the same consistent output. Yeah. And here in less than one generation, because I don't have kids ready to go to Turi yet, yeah. you know, or kids at all for that matter. <laughs> so, yeah. But you can't not be sure of the output yeah. of the institution. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make the sense. The legacy is, is not, not quite it built on, on the solid foundation. Okay. Prep my, school, though. The prep school is good. Ah, that one. That's, we won't discuss. My reference was to the senior yeah. school. Prep school is a very good school. Yeah. A very, very good school. Okay. Yeah. My question is, when you're at, uh, when you're at Turi, um, are you getting any pocket money? No, um, where, you're in Molo. Yeah. Do you know where Turi is? <laughs> no. Turi is a small it. town. <laughs> Between <laughs> <laughs> between El Bagon and Molo. Yeah. Like, let me just tell you the truth. Yeah. Turi is... The, uh, pocket money for what? Yeah. Within for the where? school, I mean, there's no... To do... There's what no... are you buying? You sign at the tax shop. Yeah. Your parents put a cap that this is how much you can think. So and that's, it's deducted. So that, that, that's, that's yeah. What, 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 what do you need to okay. what do you, What's money for? Yeah. What are you buying in Molo? In yeah. Turi? It is, I mean, Turi is the town itself. Yeah. There's nothing to buy. Yeah. So at that point, while you're in school, like there's really you just exist. You you're signing. You exist. Everyone is equal. You wear the same uniform. You play sports. You yeah. do this. I mean, yeah, there's some few flashy things here and there. Mm-hmm. But money is what's money for? Okay. So when do you? When are you introduced to some sort of pocket money in in, in your in your the holidays? In the holidays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. To start managing yourself and you know. was it chore based or was it like okay I don't I just don't want to ask I don't want you to ask me for money so. Yeah, do the things that no, you need to do. It was not a disturbance thing. It was on a needs basis. Yeah. Yeah. But also um, trying not to be too... I don't think I don't think there was encouragement for flamboyance. Mm-hmm. There was no Instagram. You yeah, went, the You weren't competing yeah. with, with yeah. anybody. You yeah. know, a good... I think, I don't know, many, many people... Uh, many people went to school in Nairobi, remember going to uh, Village Market. Yeah. To the pool bar. To the, yeah. What was it? 40 shillings. Yeah. For a game of pool. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you yeah. have 200 shillings, it's Those five games five of games, pool. Yeah. A rave burger was what? 60 bob, 70 bob? You a know? steer's. A steer days. burger, yeah. yeah. A steer's was right there. A steer yeah. burger was 220 mm-hmm. for the king's steer burger. I mean... Yeah. There was no encounter. A thousand shillings. You were done for yeah. the weekend. Yeah, yeah. You know, really and truly. People, there were call booths. People kept time. Yeah. You go to the you call box to. to tell your folks you're ready to be picked. You'll be standing outside. Yeah. And you know your night is over because it takes them 20 minutes to get from home to there. Yeah. Or however long it is, half an hour. And you should be there at the front at time. Yeah. ready to go, you know. So that discipline was sort of, you had to manage yourself. Yeah. Your parents are not going to come and wait for you indefinitely mm-hmm. or... I mean, you can try, <laughs> you know, yeah. and those, those are the small things. So the cost, and there was no, it was not by force. It was a very, there was a lot, there was no elitism, you know, yeah. like not, I don't, I don't know how else to put it. Yes, it's advantageous that we can go to village market. Yeah. But everybody, I think everybody remembers going there, yeah. you know, or going to cosmic bowling mm-hmm. at least once, twice, you know, yeah. this wasn't going to the cinema. Those, that's what the recreational was at the time. Were. So, so let's talk about then when you go to the UK, I um, mm. mean, I assume you studied in the UK. Yes. Yeah. I did. So <laughs> I, when I, you went to the UK <laughs> for, for, for your university, yeah. um, what's that? Um, process like of course you had been there for your A levels, but what's in terms of one? What's the what's the amount of investment your parents are putting in for you to be able to get your degree done in the UK in terms of purely from a financial point of view? And then secondly, how are you living in the UK? How are you meeting your costs? What are you doing with your money? So what I did, I I didn't. I went to uni. Um, I went to Lothborough. Yeah. Which is about two hours, three hours from London. Yeah substantially cheaper in terms of cost of living. Yeah. You know, actually, um, let me say something about London because I've had this from, uh, <laughs> from a couple of friends who, who have gone to study in London. They tell me there's London A and there's London B. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> there's also probably London C at this particular time. Yeah, and, and, and um, so a lot of people can say they went to university in London, but you have to look to see what university they went because the side of mm. London, which if you go is like, I guess, quote, unquote, more relatively... Uh, more more, Lon- more London than yes. or less London and then there's the London. another part of London where if yeah. you go then now yeah. you're really with, with with like the high rollers and exactly, stuff yeah exactly exactly yeah um yeah so the student accommodation uh you get your meal pass mm-hmm. just organize yourself you know? yeah. <laughs> like so you had your meal pass you had uh, three meals a day mm-hmm. Monday to Friday and they were tapped on your meal card and weekend meals uh if you go to the halls that are open it's heavily subsidized mm-hmm. so. It's just like there weren't, there wasn't the upkeep. You go to school, you study, you think. Of course, you go out, etc. Mm-hmm. You're still getting some pocket money. Um, 
I took on a job. Uh, you're allowed to work 20 hours a week. Yeah, 20 hours a week, yeah. So there's that. I mean, how much? How many, it's, what was minimum wage at that time? I don't remember, actually. Maybe about five pounds, six pounds per hour. Um, something like that. Yeah. I, I, when, I, when I was there, I think it was 10, 10 pounds an hour, I want to say. Yeah. Was that around yeah, 2011? And I did, I did, no, I was there 2017. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so it was, was I, used to, I think I used to get about 200 and 200 and something pounds a week. Yeah. Cause I, and I think I used to work between anything between 15 to 17 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll give my father credit. He really committed to the process. Yeah. <laughs> so funded the uni um, allowances as well. Yeah. Nothing extravagant. Again, yeah. But also as I was, we weren't struggling. Yeah. Per se. So, yeah. What was the, what was the, what were the fees like at that time for the undergrad, um, Undergrad for um, for the course that you were doing because you did um, politics, politics, political science. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so okay. it was about seven thousand pounds, I think, a per year. year, per year, per and year. you were there for three years. Yes, I well, I dropped out after my second year, but that's a different. Oh really? Story, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh huh. Um, so yeah, that was that was it at the time. So it was, it was good. I did um did my first year, um, then I, I had a reset that I wasn't made aware of. Mm-hmm. And the irony is, I was in the UK for the summer during the period the reset was on. Mm-hmm. And when I went, I went to the uni to sort out my admin for the following year, and they were like, "Oh, you missed your reset." Um, this reset was in a Spanish minor module, mm-hmm. um, so I said, "Okay, can I sit it?" And they were like, "No, no, you have to sit out the year." And I was like, "It's an open book test. Like yeah. the, the reset is open book, because um, the rest of my grades, I mean, I was on, on decent well, grades. Yeah. So just that one, I just slacked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A friend of mine. I'll be very honest. Um, yeah. And so that complicated things because after that, um, they then called me when I was about to board the flight at Heathrow telling me I could resit. That oh, when you're coming the, back? Yeah, now. the following day. Oh. And I told them absolutely not. So I ended up taking the year off. Um, yeah. Got a job in Dubai. In um, Dubai? Yeah, yeah, a friend of mine was at uni there. He was working there. So like, ah, you know, there's this job. I said, fantastic. Applied, got a phone interview, did it. It was um, sales and marketing for a conferencing company. Okay. Uh, mostly uh, phone, uh, phone sales as well, but it was, it was decent. So that was my first salaried um, employment. Um, and how much were how much were they paying at the time? Mm, about what, six seven thousand dirhams per month, plus bonuses based on your sales. And what was that based um, that in Kenya in Kenya shillings? At the time, maybe the dirham was about nineteen, mm-hmm. so about one hundred and twenty hundred and thirty k. Okay. Yeah, but you're not living in Kenya. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're cost of Dubai. living yeah, is, of yeah, yeah. Cost of living is so, so... So, yeah, in fact, how much of that uh, that 130K is going into... So, I stayed with Kenya. my friend. Yeah. Um, so, after that, it was groceries and, mm-hmm. you know, cost of living, life <laughs> and things. Yeah. So, it yeah. was good because I was able to save quite a bit. ETC, yeah. yeah. And then after that, I went back to the UK. To now do the second year. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And after which, the recession came and I realized there were going to be no jobs <laughs> for a good four or five years. Mm-hmm. So anybody who did uni between, if you didn't finish, if you finished 2009, 2010, and you got a job out mm-hmm. of uni, um, very well done. Like it was a very tough. In the, in the, in the, in the UK? In most places. So also yeah. there's, that, there's that thing. If you bring your CV to Nairobi and you've been to uni abroad, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're still not. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of bias. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this one has, you know, they, there's a lot of presumption. Yeah, yeah. Which is also, I don't get, why lock out talent? Yeah. There's exposure that comes from it, you know. Yeah. And not everybody who goes to the UK has come from, you know, millions and millions of family wealth and yeah. ETC. So just give, allow people the opportunity. I think mm-hmm. that that level of, oh, we're going to show you that you're not, you know what I mean? There's, yeah. So I have some friends who applied for jobs, an extremely frustrating process. Mm-hmm. They found it easier to get jobs in the UK. So that's after now, the fact. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you finish your, or so, so is that the point when you leave? That's the point at which I leave. And you leave based on the, the pre- uh, premise that, um, the recession's here. There's not going to be jobs for me. Cost so. value, yeah. Was, um, my father wasn't too pleased with it. Um, with your decision? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say. Yeah. Um, but I, I did promise him sooner or later I will, I will, I'll give him a degree certificate. Okay. Still not gotten around to that. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's on the to-do list. It's on the to-do list. Yeah. So you come back? Come back to Kenya. Come back to Kenya. Come back to Kenya. So that is 2009. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm around and just back to see what's available in terms of, of business opportunities. Um, at the time, my father is representing some uh, multinational companies trying to enter the market. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there's some, some opportunities there. 
mm-hmm. uh, just general business development, a lot of exposure, um, a lot of exposure. So that carries me for about um, a year almost or so. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, so you're, you're working with your father at that time? Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is he paying you? Uh... I mean, I live in his house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it was I more like you're living in his house, catering yeah. to your bills, catering to... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's costly. What's my OPEX? Yeah. You know what I mean? But the exposure, exposure was fantastic. Yeah. Um, very good friend of mine, a um, Nigerian guy, calls me one day and he's like, you know, what are you up to? Sends me some information um, around, around power generation. Mm-hmm. That's actually what got me very excited about power generation. So mm-hmm. one of the companies we had was looking at power. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I did, I just, I, I dived, I dived into it, you know, mm-hmm. looked at the economics of this thing and I was like, I mean, how has this never yeah. even occurred to me? Yeah. Like it had never, you know, yeah. those things that are not within your, I don't know, realm of thought. Mm-hmm. I think that's the best way to describe mm-hmm. it. And you just knuckle down, you look at the capex, you look at what it takes to mm-hmm. put a project together. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said the experience was invaluable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so that's about a year or so. Um, and maybe a question on that before you go forward. And I don't know, it might, might seem a little biased or a little unfair. Maybe you might not even be able to answer it. But do you think that because of the background that you had and the, the, the privilege and the family, the family you come from, it gave you more of an opportunity or more freedom to do that, more freedom to decide, um, I'm not going to, you know, uh, looking at my trajectory to this degree, yeah, it doesn't look very positive. So I'm gonna also the put cost that implications pause. at this yeah. time. The pound is what one fifty six. Yeah, vis a vis. Then I finish and then, yeah, you know what I mean. And there's there's a lot going on. Yeah. even uh, financially, like just yeah, yeah. So it was, it was it was a pragmatic decision. So you think it it was, was you feel it was more pragmatic than, yeah, than yeah, anything yeah, yeah. else? It wasn't a luxury decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know. The, the strain is my sister and I both in uni and all this. Yeah. So I just look at my, my own projection and I'm like, actually, <laughs> let me stop it yeah. and do that. And um, so funnily enough, one of my very close friends, I, I discussed it with him before I discussed it with my father. Uh-huh. And he told me he's going to hold me accountable mm-hmm. to this grind, this supposed hustle. Yeah, because what was the plan? Yeah, yeah. So it was to go back and, you know, so they're the ones who got me linked on the power. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, I had some friends who were um, also trading uh, precious stones mm-hmm. and things. So there were income opportunities here and there. Mm-hmm. So not structured income. Mm-hmm. But, you know, once in a while you could do this. You have demand for, you know, for example, a Tanzanite or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been quite lucky that generally I've been able to do business on the strength of a handshake. Mm-hmm. You know, that's another thing which I can't vouch for. Yeah. Everybody will not have that. That's the luxury. Yeah, and where does that? Where that's, does that? Um, that's a genuine luxury. Power come from? Of, I guess, just network, cultivated friendships and relationships and trust mm-hmm. that you know this is the process, and tying to you know if you're not cagey, there's less to be suspicious about. Mm-hmm. The more open you are, the faster a transaction flows. And mm-hmm. even if somebody's going to rip you off, the more open you are, the quicker you realize that this person is just gleaning yeah. information. I don't get me wrong, I've been scammed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <I've> been, <laughs> people have used me to glean information, yeah. definitely, and all of that. But there were, those are income opportunities. I was, I was, uh, that's the luck. The luck was, and not the luck, the luck was intentional. It was the network. It was the school I had been to. It started paying dividends mm-hmm. quite quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, you can call somebody up and say, you know, we're looking for one, two, three, four. Even when we started the bitumen, it was the schools people had been to that had put them in touch with people who this is what their family business does. So that's the advantage. Mm -hmm. That's the very big advantage. Mm -hmm. And even remove money from the equation, Mm -hmm. that is actually what, that was the luxury that I had. If I'm to use that same framing or context that you've used and take it to the 2D conversation, do you then think that right now um, it's it's a worth it expense for your child in the sense that they would then be exposed to (laughs) these (laughs) other families who are doing businesses and things like that so that when the time comes um, they can, because if you hadn't gone to 2D... How feasible feasible do you... The friends I had in 2D I knew before. Yeah. How many of your school friends opposed to your family friends, have been there through, even the people you went to school with. You go to school, 180 people, you change. Maybe you go to school with 300 people. How mm-hmm. many do you talk to? How many, the commonality you have, again, back to the thing I was saying, mm-hmm. from upbringing and from mm-hmm. the, the people you, you draw towards are people who have common values. Yeah. Everywhere, you know. As the saying is, water always finds its level. Yeah. So that's who you, you will settle around. Whether you're in that space or not, you know, I... 
don't have um, experiences where I can attribute it because you're, yes, we went to school together, but do we talk? <laughs> do I know? Do I know what most people are doing? Yeah. It's it's um, it's also a lot of people you met along the way. Just your integrity, you know. Stephen, I like the way you brought this opportunity forward. I like the way you presented etc. Mm -hmm. You know, at one point I found myself in the Nairobi town clerk's office because I had been there for three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he saw me just out of persistence. Yeah. I'd gone every day at seven a.m. Mm -hmm. for three consecutive days. So this mm -hmm. day at eleven o'clock. He came, he saw me, what is it that you want? I've been seeing you. Huh? And I was just like, I said, this, this tent has been advertised. I said, I just want the truth. Is it available or is it something that's already been wrapped up? I said, yeah. before we put effort into buying the yeah. document, yeah. ETC, is it available or is it something that's been tied up? Yeah. So he just smiled. He was like, how old are you at this time? I think I'm like 21. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm 21. He said, hey, no, I said to this guy, you've been here in a suit mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And the guy was just like, he just gave me, he said, these are, those are the volumes. Mm -hmm. Those are the costs. Decide if you can do it before you buy it. Mm -hmm. That was it. Why? Just tenacity. There's nothing, I didn't go, my father, my uncle, I called so and so, yeah, no. Just literally there until the guy, I think he was just tired. <laughs> 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 it's, yeah. it's attrition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at that point, yeah. that's, that's what it was. Yeah. That, that should be brought to you through... Um, through, I guess, is that's, those are competitiveness. Yeah. Competitive environment. If you're in a competitive sporting environment, that's something. The other day I was um, discussing with um, somebody, one of a uh, work associate, mm -hmm. and they were saying they just hired somebody because he's competitive. He's sportingly competitive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's, and he's like, that's the reason we hired him because mm -hmm. that determination carries through mm -hmm. all aspects mm -hmm. of their life. And you know, it sort of removes the soft life mm -hmm. narrative. That, like, so even told me, he's like, I'm going to introduce you to this kid, Stephen. He is like a dog with a bone. Mm -hmm. Like, he will not quit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that. I said, I, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Um, my question is then, so with, with how do you, because I'm assuming in the work that you do in the investment consulting and basically in the, a couple of things that you've talked about, there would be a need, if, if I was on the other side of the table, I would want to know that you have some sort of qualification or you have some sort of, um, um, yes, no, no, let me just call it what it is, qualification and degree. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you do know what you're doing. I can take your advice. How do you, I assume you'd meet that challenge um, or that obstacle. How do you get over that? How do you disarm me you know, from, yeah. That's actually a fantastic question. <laughs> let me just, I'll tell you, that's a brilliant question. Yeah. So the way I got around it, in yeah. um, 2011, I registered to Jiri Capital in Uganda. Okay. And I didn't make myself the CEO. Mm -hmm. I made myself the business development manager. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to tell people I have to consult my boss. <laughs> so you know, because there's that interface is not there. I said, I'll, I'll talk to a CEO and chairman. There's mm -hmm. no CEO and chairman. At yeah. this point, it's me, my friend Nelson. Nelson is now on his way to 50. Very nice yeah. guy in Uganda. But yeah. I didn't start by being the CEO. Mm -hmm. So I go, I, you know, the optics. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Um, obviously the English, you know, can be rounded up or down depending on the audience you're talking to, you yeah. know. Um, the middle ground and then the, depending on the extent of the finesse that you need to get yeah. something out of somebody, yeah. you know. And Swahili for that matter, if need mm -hmm. be. Um, there, it will be there, you know, whether it's Kikwiba. But there's uh, Kuna, Kuna Mukubu, eh? <laughs> so that really... <laughs> so because of that, they don't even ask your qualifications. There's yeah. this company, there's this chairman, is there somewhere? Yeah. CEO is there somewhere else? Yeah. We're dealing with a BDM and yeah. he's been gracious enough to come on ground and, you know... And then, so now they're the ones trying to show you that mm. your company can. So the, the ball changes as soon as there's a structure in yeah. place. Yeah. So that's, that's how... That, that's <laughs> how you, you go around. That's how the game started, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. And um, I've been told the same story for one of these... Um, Pan-African energy conglomerate. And that's how they used to, the Nigerian company, mm -hmm. that's how they used to get business. They used to go and say, ah, our gas centers. And, you know, after about 10 years, they realized we're the Uga now. You know, we are, we're, doing, <laughs> we're doing volumes, yeah, you know. Yeah. But that's how you get around it. Like, yeah. as soon as, you know, I'd, I'd be in Da in a meeting and be like, ah, then, you know, at some point we want to meet the MD. Ah, that's why I said, okay. It's been three years. Yeah. Steve Kimingi, managing director, Tajiri Kafsu, the unilateral decision. <laughs> <laughs> Said, you know, then you don't even, just, just that. That's yeah. all it changed. Yeah. And, ah, uh, Tunakaribisha Mukuregenzi wa Tajiri Kafsu, Bwana Steven, 
And you know, at that point, it's title yeah. that they care about. Yeah. You know, people are, you're talking to Mukrugenzi, the BDM is no longer there. Yeah. At that point, your meetings change from operations manager to permanent secretary. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, mm. you're at Tanesco management, you're now MD, deputy MD. You know, yeah. I remember being in a meeting and somebody was called, ah, it's an anybody. And Joe Stephen, well, is it in Indaji? I'm like, this is your area of expertise, but you know, when I'm from Stephen, eh, yeah. Krugenzi Watajiri Capital. And yeah. you know, my friends are just like, the day these guys realize this is you and your pals, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a rough. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but the day will never come because eh, I'm talking Nairobi to Wana, eh, you know, yeah. like, ah, wonderful. Eh? Yeah. Tell them, ah, you're in Dubai, which I mean, you've gone on holiday, but yeah. they need to know yeah. your in, invest, meet, investor meetings, yeah. etc. That's the thing. <clears throat> and you know, but once you have the data, mm -hmm. you can sell the project. So, like, I think one thing I mentioned in our conversation before, the struggle people have to pay for professional services. Mm -hmm. I started putting my own energy into my own work. Mm -hmm. Why am I putting together a project for somebody who may or may not pay me? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the day, they'll pick my brain, they'll get 90% of the way there, and they'll think they can do this mm -hmm. for themselves. How do you build people up front mm -hmm. if they're asking for your credentials that they should pay you, which is a question you ask? Yeah. Like, I diverted my energy into my own projects. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, it became a Tajiri Capital presentation, mm -hmm. Tajiri Capital show. Mm -hmm. And you, you just back it up, you get your knowledge. And the funniest thing is, so many people are hungry and eager to enter the African market, mm -hmm. do business on the African continent. If you can package a transaction well, mm -hmm. there's finance. There's always going to be finance for it. If the thing is well structured, and not jargon and things, just fundamentally, does this thing make sense? Yeah. Do you know what licensing is required? It's not amorphous. Yeah. Here is everything you need. Mm -hmm. But I'm the one who knows my way around Kenya. Yeah. I'm the one who knows my way around Tanzania, yeah. Uganda. The one who knows my way around Abuja. You know? That's what changes the game. Yeah. So that, that's really how I'm around. It's good you've talked about that. Because <clears throat> what next question I want to ask you, actually, is tell me how, how you make your money. Like how, how as Tajiri Capital, as an investment consultant um, or advisor, how do you actually make your money? Break it down to me like a 10-year-old, 10-year-old um, boy. I'll do it. I'll do any transaction. Let me yeah. not like any legal transaction. I'm not picky. I'm not bougie about it. Last yeah. year, I sold, um, I supplied chickens mm -hmm. to somebody in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Black chickens, uh, I am Samani. Apparently, mm -hmm. Indonesian or something. Quite rare. Mm -hmm. World's most expensive chicken. I had no idea. He showed me a picture. He said, Stephen, uh, do you have these in Kenya? I said, oh, no, sorry, sir, what is that? He said, let me text you. I am Samani. I said, no. Oh. He said, uh, let me come back to you. I knew nothing. I went on Google. <laughs> I checked this thing. Yeah. Called one of my friends in South Africa. Joshua, can we get black chickens? The guy said, which black chickens? Fortunately, South Africa, because of their game industry, mm -hmm. are very organized. So they have bird breeders, classifications, mm -hmm. who is doing what. Yeah. So Josh finds this person who has 10 of these chickens. Mm -hmm. 10. 10. And I tell the guy, fine, these things are going for $200 a pop. Mm -hmm. The guy says, no problem. Ah, only to find out that these things can go for a thousand dollars a pop after post fact. So yeah. realize that's why he agreed so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. like, like that's like an example. If something yeah. is going, how much of my time is it going to take? How soon am I going to get paid? Mm -hmm. That's all it boils down to. You know, it's a time money offset. Mm -hmm. So I'm not bougie at you. I said, oh, I only do energy agriculture. I said, my friend, yeah. let me tell you, if somebody is paying you to do one, two, three, mm -hmm. just do it for them. And so then what you then charge is a commission on... Or a fee. Or a I fee. will do this for you. I'll put this together. If you want licensing, for example, I'll sort it out for you. This is how much I'll charge you. Yeah. If the business has potential... How do you go about deciding how much you're going to charge someone? How much... Or maybe the, maybe the better question to ask is how much is your time worth? That's a very good question. I don't know how much my time is. <laughs> that's <actually> a, <laughs> that's a very... That's a very challenging yeah. question. Um, just depend Within reason. What is... <laughs> no, within, within reason. reason for you and within reason for me might be two willing, different things. willing buyer willing, willing seller. seller and then within reason so, but then so what's what's your what's your strategy within a willing buyer willing seller context um so if i come and i say look i want uh i don't know uh, trade cars or whatever the case is yeah. do you then look at me and be like yeah i think i can charge this guy a million shillings i can charge this guy two million shillings let me propose and see what no, happens you also look at the scale of the project yeah and then you also gauge is it is it an institution that's doing it is it an individual that's doing it yeah you know, there are people I'll, I'll give them something for free okay i'll do it i'll do it because I've, I've gotten a lot of 
there's a lot of information I've gotten for free yeah. <laughs> that I have. Yeah. You know, I didn't I didn't pay for it. I yeah. didn't I didn't go to school and study electrical engineering. Yeah. When I was when I was in Tanzania, somebody sat me down and took me through the science of power transmission and distribution. Mm -hmm. You know, these are I didn't pay for that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just like ah, okay. This is uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, I'll I'll do it for you. Can you do this? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. And also you look at market rates. You know now there are so many investment advisors. Yeah. People yeah, are and have you ever considered <clears throat> going mainstream into the investment? Like I said, I realize pushing my own opportunities yeah. has much more commercial value. Mm -hmm. What can be done here? Who can do it? Can I go get that person? I convince them we can do one, two, three, four. Can they pay for the licensing? Can they put in the working capital? Those are the things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now, again, 10 years later, 11 years later, people come up to me Ah, Stephen, you know, we need somebody who knows their way around this market. Um, can you do this for us? Can you do that for mm -hmm. us? You know, and ETC. And, and that's, that's just what it boils down to. And now, being in Nigeria 80, 90% of the time, mm -hmm. um, you know, it means that that's what I'm doing. I, I farmed as well for mm -hmm. a while. I grew uh, cabbages and potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, it was all right. It's paid. <laughs> kept, <laughs> kept the lights on. Yeah. I was there. I was on the farm every morning at half five. Mm -hmm. I, I know my way around those me that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just you don't always have to extort somebody to the nth degree. You know, it's yeah. not. It's not a, that's why I said willing buyer, willing seller. Yeah, yeah. If you come, you see me. You say, Steve, I need a deck for one, two, three, four. I'll even just check. Do you already have this deck? I say, okay, cool. Okay. If you're like starting, why am I, why am I charging you? Yeah. All these people charging four thousand dollars for a deck. Yeah. Who who is doing? Who can afford? If you're starting your business today, you have six hundred thousand for the paperwork. Yeah. And you may or may not get funding off yeah. that. Are there guarantees to that's what it boils down yeah. to? Yeah. And so I'll ask you this, if you can tell me as we sort of move away from your career, if you can tell me the lowest amount you've made on a deal, a middle amount you've made on a deal, and the highest amount you've made on a deal. <laughs> The highest that you're willing to you're willing to tell us for the financially incorrect audience. Um, Lewis. Yes. On a transaction. I didn't even buy a sandwich at Java. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, and what the transaction was. <laughs> what can be disclosed of it? Yeah. No, somebody bought, I think, five was it two hundred bags of sugar or something? Yeah. It was like make your Ten shillings, two thousand bob. You just get your impressa. Yeah. Everyone is doing bank transfer, etc. And you just, do you know, say, I just call this person. They can sort you out. And sure enough, it's not punitive. It's not. Yeah. Know, is it good yeah. and great? No. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> middle amount. I don't know. <laughs> on, on your scale, on your scale of middle. I know. I, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what a middle amount is. You know, I've done a lot of free work, huh? mm -hmm. but what I've gotten in exchange is a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Character development. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I can now bill for quite confidently, yeah. you know, as um at, at my big age. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. now it now becomes easier to so there's some experiences I can't quantify monetarily yeah. that are definitely, definitely my biggest paydays. Yeah. Hands down. Give, okay, give give us one of those. Yeah. Uh I was putting together um when I started looking at the power projects. Mm -hmm. Um, back when I was working for my dad and these guys, so my friend, um, friend Mohammed sends me this breakdown mm -hmm. of power, the, the Nigerian power sector, and I read this thing. Honestly, I internalized it. You mm -hmm. know, I think the same way people who memorize the Quran, like yeah. I know that thing up to today. Yeah, I know the contents of this study end to end. Yeah, right. So I put it together and I put together a proposal for this, this Spanish company, and they said, "Ah, oh, Nigeria is a scam." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a scam. There's no way a 21-year-old in Kenya yeah. is going to be able to get us this license. Yeah. They put up their hands and said it's a scam. But, my friend, let me tell you, <laughs> there's very little competition on that knowledge in that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have. I can't, I can't say I have much competition there. So did it pay me? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But huge earnings. That one, when it pays dividends, it will pay properly yeah yeah i have no doubt about that that's i have my conviction okay and that that has been my biggest payout so far just the sheer volume of information yeah i was able to access and gain and their guidance as well because you're dealing with a business development director mm -hmm. the commercials are his business mm -hmm. so to be able to know that from the get mm -hmm. so it's not from an engineering standpoint a theoretical standpoint it's literally just this is the business period that yeah 
hands down my biggest PD. Yeah. 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 So being able to have <clears throat> being able to have knowledge that other people um, yeah, yeah. don't have. And I can't. That. I can't even. I don't think there's a number I can tag on that. Yeah. Yeah. In the in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk a bit about then how you spend your money, how you've chosen to spend your money over the years. Okay. Um, what's your, do you have a, what, what do you call it? Do you have a, a, a rule book of some sort or a strategy of how you, you spend your personal money? I'm maybe one of the worst people at, uh, to give this kind of advice. I'll uh-huh. be very honest. I'm very good at telling people where the, the money is. So you don't, manage, <coughs> you don't manage your own money in the, the same way that you? I try to. Mm-hmm. Um, I invest a lot in, in, in my company and my time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, if, if you look at um, what FX person were telling us they do, education on financial literacy, mm-hmm. ETC, I'll take that course. I'll join, I'll help, I'll be their plus one on their road to their one million mark, mm-hmm. you know, of people educated under that literacy. Mm-hmm. I'm open. Like, if something looks good, it will return to me as yes. investment to myself, yes. Register a company here, register a company there, get this license there, get that like I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I will do that all day, mm-hmm. every day. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it doesn't pay, it's just money that's that's gone. Yeah. Sometimes it does because you now have this opportunity, you have this entity and it's transferable. Yeah. So I think um I, where where I've been is investing in myself. So earlier this year we were fortunate enough to be offered to join a cash pooling and to see in a private equity round. Mm-hmm. So we didn't do the whole round. We just, the entry ticket was quite small. Mm-hmm. So we put money into that and the business has promise and things like that. So those are the kind of things I'll look at. Um, I'll look at just, so like now is when <clears throat> I feel that I can take money out of my grind, mm-hmm. so to speak. Um, but even then it's not, it's not substantial, you know. Mm-hmm. Bulk it still goes back into business development sometimes physically being there is mm-hmm. the biggest investment you can make mm-hmm. you know just whether it's to buy that plane ticket apply for that visa go for that meeting mm-hmm. sort that out mm-hmm. that ability to be there is quite key so um, so majority of your your money in terms of investment is is just back in your business you don't have like a so um in terms of bonds and stocks yeah um I have by I have regret <laughs> for not having invested in in certain things. Okay. Um. So whether it was Safaricom at IPO, I had an ID. I mm-hmm. don't know what I was doing. I did an internship at CFC Stockbroker, mm-hmm. now Stanbic. Honestly, I should I should really have bought stocks. <laughs> like I should <laughs> I should I, I I know better. Like yeah. I just I can't explain to you why why you didn't. <clears throat> at no point have I. Um. But it's it's a tumultuous time. Mm-hmm. For stocks, for returns, capital gains, all this and that. So people are looking at more diversified angles at which they can begin to invest their money. So for me at the moment, like I said, we pulled into uh, an equity investment with some mm-hmm. of my friends. Um, you know, we're now looking at other small ventures we can invest in. And there's now, fortunately, a growing alternative investment structure mm-hmm. that can be looked at. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but I think... Maybe a bit of PTSD from mm-hmm. not having working capital means that <laughs> the, by the time I'm investing in something, I need to know that money is going to be replaced very soon mm-hmm. to allow me to maintain that mm-hmm. minimum balance mm-hmm. of, of, for OPEX. Yeah. Um, and that's really the drive. But, you know, those are investments will always pay, like, depending on where you are. Put money away. If I could have saved money when I was younger mm-hmm. um, into... Gradually, you know, and even now the entry price for bonds and all of that has come down substantially. Yeah. You know, um, again, even like FX Pesa, I don't know what the entry point is, um, the minimum, but it's palatable. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that they'll tell you they've gone out to educate students, university students. Yeah. Uh, they're looking at, you know, products for women and ETC. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the company we put our money into has similar kind of, it's a investment management solution mm-hmm. as well for the low low bottom end of the market. Yeah. So I would advise what you can save, save it. Especially mm-hmm. now, just things are not getting cheaper. Mm-hmm. Things are not getting easier. The income disparity is not getting smaller. So I strongly, if I could go back and change something, I'd have, I'd have been more diligent about my savings. Yeah. I, I'd have not been trying to vie for chairman of the Chop Life gang. That's mm. a, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely, I'll definitely go and, and, and see how best I could have done that at an earlier stage. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So most, um, your most frivolous uh, purchase? 
Sadly, I'll have to say it was a company registration. <laughs> a company registration. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that's why I said I'm really boring, yeah, like, in yeah. terms of, you know, those are, like, yeah. yeah, 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 those are, you look at it, it'll pay. Like, again, it's not really frivolous because I know, I know what I want to do with it eventually, yeah. you know, so those are, <laughs> regrettably, I'm not going to uh, join other people in the big league and say yeah. I splashed millions here yeah, and there. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. So that's not that's not a tendency you've had or you've ever had to, no. to deal with or like no, work like, around. No. I have not not done. Because if you say you bought a suit and it's for work, <laughs> you know, you look good when you go into a meeting. People look like they can. Your the, your thread count allows you to be trusted with. <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that those are not frivolous, you know. And there's nothing over the top. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so frivolous by your, by your definition of... of yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I took a punt on something and at yeah. the time I was like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> just like, do I, do I want to do this? Like, yeah. is, is this the right time? So when this money goes, like... Yeah. We're, I'll just be left here like like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a company registration. Okay. I guess I'll just sort of wrap up. You said you're going to you you still want to get the um, the degree for your for your for your father. Yes. What's the the justification for that? If if because I mean, it sounds I, like sounds like I had this conversation last night actually with a very good friend of mine, uh -huh. and um, she was telling me that I'm disciplined enough to do a degree if I want to. So. It's, an, it's a running excuse. Mm -hmm. So I need to put a, a time cap on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's good to have, um, I guess. It also, um, I don't know. It'll, at this point, I don't know what value it will add to me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something I would like to do. I think there's enough has been invested there. Mm -hmm. and so just finish. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, we've built the house. The struts for the roof are on. Yeah. You put the pre-layer. Now we are skimming. On the roof tiles, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that's that's yeah. where we are at this yeah. juncture. That's yeah. how I see it. So it's yeah. a decision: do I do I want to finish an undergrad or do I want to do an MBA? Yeah, or those are the things. But I'll I'll, I'll get it done. There's, okay. Yeah. Um, my second last question: Do you think that having um, having or living in a in a more or less privileged privileged life or being or exposed to a lot more money than, than most. Do you think that has um, a direct effect on what you perceive as monetary success? Um, so, for example, um, you know, if, if, if my assumption of what you quantify as a lot of money versus what I quantify as a lot of money may be two different, maybe two different things. So do you think that just by sheer existence of the life that you existed in, you have a, a higher cap, so to speak, of what, of what money means. <laughs> so I'm a very good friend of mine, and hopefully you'll have him on the podcast soon. And yeah. He says to everything in Kenya has been broken down to billion and land cruiser. Those <laughs> are the two. Uh, <laughs> so our expectations yeah. are now all the same. Yeah. It's just um, maybe what, what do I think it would take to be financially happy? Yeah, yeah but maybe, maybe, I mean, so expectations in, same, in terms of, you know, saying billion land cruiser, fine. But then in <laughs> terms of saying, how do I get to the billion? Okay. How do I get to the land cruiser? So I was given, yeah. um, I was given a sound bit of advice mm. in my early twenties by, by one of my uncles. And, um, he told me to come up with a terminal number. You know, and he sat me down and said, can I get you to come up with a number? Mm -hmm that sorts out all of your problems. Mm -hmm. If you get to that number, or if you do a transaction worth that number, mm -hmm. because you're not employed, you're not salaried. Mm -hmm. So what is the number you're going for? You know, come up with, what would you like to do? What does your ideal existence look like? Mm -hmm. You know, realistically, what can you attain? What trans What does your pipeline look like? Mm -hmm. In terms and this, I think I find this very sound advice because mm -hmm. it even applies to salaried people. When you're looking for a new job, what is your current terminal number? Mm -hmm. If you say you're living on, you know, 20,000 bob a month and you know that if you were earning 35, mm -hmm. it would allow you to do this and this. It would allow you to be closer to work. You would save on commuting. You would, you know what I mean? These are the small things that you can start begin to yeah. look like. Like where are the savings yeah. entailed in this kind of yeah. arrangement? And so for me, that's, I think it's, it's individual. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that was some of the most sound advice I got. So even sometimes when you look at how long is a transaction going to take for me to do vis-a-vis -vis the return, mm -hmm. how much closer does it get me to this, 
this number and the number can come up and down cost of living comes up and down you know and at a young age i was told okay you want to have children what kind of schools do you want them to go to what's attainable what's reasonable factor all of these things into that number you know which is why some people don't want to have children you might tell me okay steve i don't want to have children but a soft life you know what i mean mm-hmm. i want mm-hmm. on a flat in london i want this i want that like all these, these are the things i want you see that you see, you see what you just said right now that's actually what my question yeah. is on like you see you'll say i want a flat in london no i'm saying yeah. i may sit and say i want a flat in 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 kilimani or lavita <laughs> so, so, like, so, so, so if you had allowed yeah. me to finish this somebody yeah. may say over and above their current existence yeah that's what they would aspire towards yeah but then what does your pipeline look like Mm. Is this a point of conversation? Are you hoping to win sport person next Sunday? <laughs> like, what are, what is informing yeah. what decision. is informing that decision? You know, that those are the important things. Like over and above your current existence. Yeah. So I think where you come you off, like the flat, even if it's Kilimani, somebody may be already in Kilimani. Somebody yeah. may be, or they may have this, but they may know that is a good investment. Yeah, you already live in you know your Loretta, your Lavington, your Runda, yeah. your Mothaga, your Gigiri. Then you're like, ah, you know what I want to do. Huh? I want to buy uh, three one beds mm-hmm. in Kile. Mm-hmm. That's now, you know, a projection mm-hmm. that you have. These things are going for X amount. Mm-hmm. This is this is what I want to do. How, what's the, you know what I mean? Now you yeah. quantify that. Yeah. You look at your pipeline. What else do you need to add to your pipeline? Mm-hmm. You know, and that that's the realistic, that's honestly, that's the best advice I ever got. Yeah. So I have my terminal number. It moves up and down with inflation, with location, mm-hmm. with... Life in Abuja is much cheaper mm-hmm. than in Nairobi. So, you know, it can come down a bit. Yeah, in fact, in, I was going to ask, so, so why, why actually Nigeria as opposed to? Markets. Markets. It's yeah. a fantastic market. So far, so good. I'm very, very optimistic. About, so you said 80% uh, of your time is in Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. I'm very optimistic about the future of that country, mm-hmm. as well as the whole African continent. But the market is tremendous. Mm-hmm. And if you're there, you're on ground. The opportunities are also there on ground. Mm-hmm. Um, so from agri to energy... Which is why I allow you to say that when I collect dividends for yeah. this business development I did mm-hmm. in the Nigerian space, mm-hmm. will pay mm-hmm. exponentially, mm-hmm. you know, like, and almost perpetually. Yeah. You know, so that's one of those things where that, that knowledge has gotten me into rooms I wouldn't be able to get into just on, give, you know what I mean? Yeah. That the information I was given on the Nigerian power sector combined with the commercial has gotten me through so many doors just on virtue of knowledge, even in country, people are like, that is sound knowledge about this structure. Yeah. So that, that has carried me, which is why I say I can't quantify, that's my biggest payday. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gotten me into places I would genuinely not have imagined I would stroll into with such ease and be taken that seriously and be understood and the input be valued. Um, and that's so, that's, that's, it's a, it's a fantastic market. It's been, it's been good to me so far. Yeah. Um, you know, there are challenges everywhere, FX, cost of living, etc. But mm-hmm. so far, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, thank God. And that's, that's where it's home at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I don't see, I don't foresee myself leaving anytime soon. Anytime soon. The best is yet to come yeah. as far as that place is concerned. Yeah. Okay. Um, last thing. Um, last thing, that, um, I guess, for you to say anything around, maybe let me ask you what... Um, what does money mean to you? What I guess through this, through your whole thirty x years of 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 experience in <laughs> life and and monetary value, what what do you think is the true value of of money for you? Um, peace of mind mm-hmm. and options, mm-hmm. the option to do something, you know. Yeah. That's or the option not to do something. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's the being able to not do something is yeah. more important than being able to yeah. do something. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, money affords you optionality, which in turn offers you <laughs> relative that peace of mind. Peace of mind. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Well, that yeah. was that. That was an interesting conversation, I think. Um, I've learned a lot about um, the... I guess different things that and different paths that people can take to the pursuit of happiness. We talked a little bit about privilege, um, talked a little bit about Turi, um, and that was I, I really enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, so please leave a comment. Have any questions uh, for Steve? Please do leave a comment. Uh, we'll be sure to get them to him so that he can expound if he does need to do that. If you're in Nigeria, hopefully this gets a, a bit of Nigerian viewers as well. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This is financially incorrect. A podcast sponsored by FX Pesa.